A distributed and decentralized are two words that are usually used to describe the blockchain. But do we really understand the meaning of these features? I have often heard people substitute distributed and decentralized as they mean the same or so close that is almost of the same nature. No, it's not. I'm Alexey Konashevich and you are on Blockchain State. The origin of this misconception is this image that creates an impression that distributed is an ultimate state from centralized, decentralized through to distributed. Paul Barron, whose image you've just seen, was an American scientist. This image was a part of his research work about communication networks. It was the pre-digital era and there was no internet. The first personal computers appeared at that time. Even asymmetric cryptography didn't exist. The pillar of the whole modern digital world. In one recent academic paper, a researcher analyzed Paul Barron's legacy and an impact on internet development. Even though Dr. Barron was a true expert in his field, it happens that not always scientists are right and their findings can be implemented. By the way, this theoretical work was devoted to the resilience of communications in a possible nuclear attack of the Soviet Union. So what is centralized? It means authority when one person has some power towards another or others. Centralized means that between Alice and Bob, there is someone who is a trusted third party in the language of cryptography. By the way, an interesting fact, cryptographic standards don't use the word decentralized, but a state of having or not having a trusted third party. A trusted third party can get authority through delegation of power, say Alice and Bob agreed about it. Or it happened because there is no choice. There are many cases when life dictates to rely on third parties. For example, a transaction cannot occur in one place and at one time. We cannot always deal like in those gangsters movies. Show me your product. No, show me your money first. Decentralized is the opposite. In this case, Alice and Bob can interact peer-to-peer. -peer. No one is between them or they can easily opt for it. So centralized and decentralized are mutually exclusive binary positions. Nevertheless, we also can hear something like more decentralized or more centralized. Well, more decentralized is not accurate. It's just an ultimate state of no intermediary. While centralized can have some degree. Say there is a market for professional services like stockbrokers. And even though you cannot or may not commit a transaction without an intermediary, you still have a choice of competing service providers. And having no such a choice when you have only one provider, would mean the ultimate centralization or monopoly in, in economic parlance. In blockchain, decentralization appears on two levels. The first is that the network has no authority. No one directs it and no one administers it explicitly. It is a non-hierarchical system where all network members are equal. All members are responsible only for their own nodes. Secondly, at the user's level, Alice and Bob do not need to have a third party to commit transactions. And here you can say, wait, Alice and Bob send their transaction to the network. A node picks it up and includes it in a block with other transactions. Yes, a miner in this case is the trusted third party. But contrary to the conventional system, for example, in banking, when a bank keeps the ledger as the ultimate source of truth, on blockchain, either Alice or Bob can take their transaction and mine a block themselves. In normal life, such a situation would mean unproportionate discretion. Alice wouldn't let Bob keep the record of their transaction because if only Bob keeps it, he can tamper with it. 
the phenomenon of blockchain implies that parties not only do not need to trust each other, but they don't need a trusted third party, such as a bank, to rely on. A user constantly interacts only with its local version of the wallet, which simultaneously is a network node. For the record, any core or full Bitcoin wallet is a node. You can mine blocks there. Nowadays, it doesn't make sense as your personal computer won't be able to compete with powerful computers specifically designed for mining. But the rule is still there. You can do it. There are no formal barriers on blockchain. On the contrary, you cannot come to your bank and say, look, I will accomplish this transaction myself. I don't need a bank clerk or I don't need a bank server to process my transaction. What is distributed? Distributed is a state of something to be in many different places, geographically speaking. In blockchain, it means the state of the copy of the ledger being distributed. The ledger means the chain of blocks or simply put the database. Let us refer to other examples of distribution to make it clear. Imagine there is a product. For factories that produce copies of it, it's important to distribute it among consumers. Or why would they produce it? Distributors supply to consumers as many copies as possible. And it has nothing to do with the state of decentralization, as distribution can be centralized and decentralized or the production can be centralized and decentralized. There can be only one factory that produces and distributes the copies of this product. It can be a consortium of factories under one ownership, or it can be an unlimited number of independent producers that use one standard, one technical standard to make the same product. The blockchain is exactly this. It has one common protocol, the standard, and those miners that want to produce blocks independently can apply it. Nodes can unite in a mining pool and delegate some power to coordinate nodes to make the production more efficient. Still, they always retain that extension of the power that lets them become independent at any time. Pools form and fall apart. Nodes migrate between pools. It's a competitive living environment. Despite many talks about vulnerabilities and pool decentralization, there is only one solid fact. Bitcoin has been running since 2009 and has never been compromised. Ultimately, I would like to say why it's so important to understand all the kinship behind blockchain technologies. If Bitcoin is an example of a decentralized distributed blockchain, there is another branch of the evolution of distributed systems, so-called permissioned and private distributed ledger technologies. The family of hyperledger frameworks is probably the most advanced among others. Permissioned and private is a degree of centralization, which means the network can be distributed, have many nodes and many copies of the ledger, but it is centralized to some extent. What that means for the network, the network is not so resilient to cyber threats and the ledger is not immutable anymore, as there is a controlling member or a cartel of members who can change it. If you would like to know more about this topic, you can watch my previous videos. Thank you. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, share and write your comments below. See you in the next video.